Hello, Sid Roth here with Mario Morello. And I have to tell you, I know Mario has been looking forward to this. I am so looking forward to this. Um, you talk about uh, a shaking that is coming to America around the election time in the month of November. You don't have to be prophetic to know that. Yes. You also don't have to be prophetic to know which it, if, whichever party wins, there will be civil unrest. It Massive. doesn't matter who wins. Uh, uh, so I want to know what God has shown you about the shaking coming to America. Well, Brother Sid, it's an honor to be with you, and I want to answer your question very directly. November is going to be a, a massive moral civil earthquake. Many things that we are looking at now are going to be infinitely greater and more intense in the month of November. The reason that I wanted to be on this show with you is because I believe that your ministry is a voice not only of supernatural, but of sanity. And the body of Christ is getting so many confusing messages about how to prepare for the month of November and what to do and what is actually going to happen. And you know, the word of God says, if the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, who will prepare for war? And how will the army move forward? And I really believe that we need to identify what I feel God wants to do to the people watching is make them disaster proof. You're, you're literally going to stand against the wind, the storm, the fire, the confusion, the attacks, and you're going to prevail. And you, know, you know what, Mario? I believe there is coming yes, such sir. a outpouring of what I've been calling, and it's a biblical term, the greater glory. A glory that the world has never seen before. A glory that will change the paradigm for Christianity, change the paradigm for nations. Uh, and my eyes, although I know the things we're talking about are true, yes, my eyes is focusing on that glory. And I don't think it's an accident that there is a light above your head. It's not supernatural. I know that. But it's prophetic of the yes, coming sir. glory. That's what's going to push us. <laughs> yes, over. sir. But go ahead. I just had to Boy, get that commercial. You know, you're, you're saying what I'm saying right now. You know, in the beginning of my book, Vessels of Fire and Glory, I said before there can be a great awakening, there must be a rude awakening. And the rude awakening for the disciples came when Jesus was walking through the magnificent city of Jerusalem, and, and they were ooing and aahing over these massive buildings. Why? What we would do walking through the mall of Washington, D.C. with the Smithsonian and all of these magnificent buildings, the Capitol building, the Washington Monument, on and on it goes. Well, Jesus said all of these will be toppled, not one stone left on top of another. Now, you couldn't do that unless you had defeated the Jewish army. You couldn't. Israel would defend itself to the death. So in 70 AD, when this happened and Jesus prophesied it, that was a chilling prediction. And there are chilling predictions right now. So they asked him, when will this happen? You know, I got to get my house in order, sell my condo, get rid of my timeshare, work on my 401k and get everything arranged for disaster. And the first thing he said was, he didn't answer the question they asked. He answered the question they should have asked. He said, take heed that you are not deceived. The greatest threat to the body of Christ right now is a lack of discernment, lack of hearing the voice of God. We should be ready not to run and hide, but to stand and watch as God pours out his spirit on us. Just as the evil will rise, so will the anointing rise and will surpass it. The best verse I know is in 1 Samuel 10, look at verse 6, and it says, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. And let it be when the, these signs come to you that you do as the occasion demands, for God is with you. 
some people watching Sid will say, well, what do I do to prepare? You have no idea how you have already been doing the right thing to prepare. The best way to prepare is to draw closer to God so you can hear his voice and receive two things. First, inner confidence that no matter what, you're going to stand with God. And number two is direction, special direction. The Lord will tell you not to store and hoard up food and water and stuff, but it, it is powerful how God is preparing people. And there is actually a spirit that needs to come on us, Sid, where we not only welcome this, we realize that we're going to know God in a way we, we never had before and do things we have never done before because of his glory. That's how Paul, he said, I, I glory in tribulation. I glory in it because I know what God is doing inside of me. You talk about the shaking in yes, November, sir. right around the election. You talk about a judgment coming on yes, specific sir. groups of people. Let me read them. Pastors, politicians, celebrities, and influence makers. Comment on that. Well, there's no way to explain how Nancy Pelosi was caught going to a, a beauty salon. That was a, an explosive moment. And her reaction has been so ugly. I cite that, Sid, only not because I want to pick on her, but because she was seemingly impervious to this kind of public shaming. And now she's in it. Well, it's because she's come between something God wants and God will not tolerate. As Daniel said, God sets up kings and tears them down. The church, I'm reminded of the scripture. Judgment begins, doesn't, it doesn't end, it begins at the house of God. It begins at the house of God. Pastors need to beware. If by marketing and human wisdom and what I call big screen, skinny jeans and fog machines, you have developed a massive congregation that doesn't know God, doesn't love God, doesn't want God. If you have cheapened grace and taken what should have been a catalyst to holiness and mutated it into a license to sin, as Paul warned in Romans not to do, that is the significant change that's coming. And I'm going to, I really wanted to focus on why judgment is coming. Because God loves America. God will not let America be destroyed. And what is very fearful is the drastic measures that God is willing to take to bring the church back to a biblical foundation, the drastic steps God is willing to take to restore holiness on those that are behind the pulpit, and the drastic steps he's willing to take with our economy, with our stature, with our with our protection, if, it, if the option is for America to go down, God is rolling up his sleeves. And in November, he's going to selectively and surgically remove people in some very fearful ways. But those who are righteous, this is why I love uh, Isaiah 26, 20, which is a verse I've been living in. You know, when I mentioned direction, special direction, and the inner work, God doing a work in you to remove your fear, the weight, uh, as Jesus said, don't let the constant pressure of the last days weigh you down with carousing. So many Christians are, are literally f acting immoral right now because of fear. They, they don't see the purpose of prayer and holiness. They're making the opposite reaction they should have to what's going on. Anyway, I want to read this verse very quickly. Isaiah 26, verse 20. Come, my people, enter into your chambers. Shut the doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. I believe that this storm will pass. The righteous will shine, and evil is going to be exposed in America. The devil always overplays his hand. Black Lives Matter, Antifa, the, the turmoil in our streets is leading Americans to a point where while they are for racial justice and they are for uh, fairness and in our system, 
They're watching evil unfold and they don't want it. And it's going to create a massive hunger for those who preach the word of God faithfully, who operate in signs and wonders with purity. This is going to be a golden age, but it, it will begin with an earthquake, a moral, spiritual earthquake, an implosion that will set the stage for the greatest harvest of souls in American history and in world history. You know, I'm reminded a number of years ago, and fortunately these two men have repented, have, have been restored, uh, but you were on a TBN show, you yes. made a statement, and the minute you were going to answer the statement fully, the show was shut down, and then picked up again. Right. Well, is that too personal to ask you about? No, no. Okay. You know, uh, there are parts of obeying God that I don't like. <laughs> and one of them is when he gives you a word. You know, one of my heroes is David Wilkerson, a man that was greatly misunderstood. But he was a true prophet. And David would hear things from God and have to speak them. And they weren't always comfortable. I was on TBN with Paul and Jan Crouch when God told me that three ministries were going to be destroyed within a matter of 30 days of that broadcast. I was a young man. Hmm. And uh, so I was going to not say anything, Sid, doing everything in my power, saying, Lord, give this to someone else. When Paul looked at me with Jan seated beside him, and he said, is God telling you anything right now? And it's on film. I, I can't find it. It's conveniently unavailable. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything more about that. But I looked at them and I said, there are three ministries that are going to be destroyed within 30 days of this broadcast. And, I, and they said, well, who are they? And then all of a sudden, the Lord said, don't say any names. Just say what I told you. And Paul said, I think I know who you're talking about. And then said, he looked at me and he said, are we that third ministry? Well, that was not on the air. No, it wasn't. In other words, they cut it down, they stopped yeah. it, and he asked the question. And he said, are we that third ministry? Hmm. And then Paul said, I don't want to be that third ministry. And he and Jan in the audience, we all turned around in our seats, knelt before God and prayed a heartfelt prayer of repentance. And I believe that that had its uh, effect. And I do believe that I'm sensing the same thing right now. And I don't like it, Sid. I hate it. But I feel a, a, a very amazing mixture of dread and joy. And I just can't say enough that those of you that are teaching a false grace need to understand that you are shaking your fist at God and he will not tolerate it anymore. You the see what, about yeah. Mary, as I read the Bible every day and I hear the innuendos or the blatant statements written by some, quote, grace teachers. I say, what Bible are they reading? Yes. Don't they know there's seven churches in Revelation? And yes. um, uh, just about every one of them, uh, Jesus says, repent or I'll take away your, your candle. Well, every one, and one out, outside of one, and then it's implied. And the church of Laodicea is perfectly a profile of the American compromised church with the 12-minute express service and, and all of these things that have been taught. Because it says, you think that you don't need anything, but you are poor, miserable, blind, and naked. And I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That's exactly where I feel I am right now. You see the commercials on TV that tell you to buy gold. That's exactly what Jesus said in Revelation, buy gold. The gold he wants us to buy is this. There are turkeys and there are eagles. And it's time for the eagles to leave the turkey yard. 
instead of pecking the seed of carnal Christianity in the turkey yard, you need to spread your wings and let the wind of the Spirit take you up into the greater glory, the intimacy with Christ, the power of God, because you see what's going to happen. The people that want this hollow uh, imitation, counterfeit Christian experience in America are going to die off. They're, they, the audiences of tomorrow, of the immediate future, will have gone through turmoil. They don't want entertainment. They want answers to interfere. They have habits and drives that they hate, and they want deliverance. So the church of tomorrow will be online as well as in person. God's anointing will flow through the internet and the voices that God will use in the immediate future are the ones that are not afraid to tell people, if you're going to serve Christ, you don't serve him as savior and then as Lord. Until he's Lord, he is not your savior. Until he has the unquestioned throne of your heart, you cannot experience the active ingredient of Christianity which is death to self, resulting in new life and power. Now, when you go into, you, hey, uh, Mario has the most fabulous ministry. Thank he you. goes into the worst areas of the big cities of America, though mostly California, in the areas infested by gangs and drugs yes, and, and pornography and and. and, and uh, you know, slavery, so to speak, through prostitution. Uh, uh, and you preach that kind of strong message to them. Uh, how, did, how do these uh, gang guys take that kind of message? You know, I really believe that, that, that one of the reasons God has blessed you so much, Sid, is your focus on winning souls and demonstrating the supernatural power of God in a biblically based and centered way. I'm gonna tell you a quick story because it's gonna answer your question directly. We went into a homeless camp, our workers did, and they found a woman that seemed so out of place in a homeless camp. It was absolutely in, uh, inexplicable that she was there, but she was, and she was terrified. What had happened is she had come home from work one day, walked in her house, and her husband and children were all murdered. They were dead. And she didn't bother to wait for the police. She ran for her life, left her job, left her friends, left no forwarding address, and ended up in a homeless camp. And one of the things people don't realize that happens to you when you are homeless in a homeless camp, you're subject to sickness because you're exposed to the elements. And here was a woman, maybe upper middle class, suddenly living on the streets. And one day she's handed a card and people wonder, why do you take the time to send workers down into these hobbles and hell holes and pits? Because sometimes we don't know how they got there. We have no idea how they got there. We, we can't have a stereotype that everybody's story is that they were lazy and addicted. She took the card and came to the tent terrified, sat on the side. I walked out and the Lord said, don't you dare preach until you look this woman in the eye and you speak life. And I said, Lord, what's happened to her? And this horrible story unfolded. And I walked over, I stood in front of her and I said, you have diseases in your vital organs in your skin, in your bones, your heart, your liver, and your kidneys. Well, let me tell you something. She began to shake, and her healing was so dramatic that it radiated throughout the packed out tent. She was not saved. She had been healed, and there she was, ready to be born again, to give God her whole life, she had to be in a program where we kept her identity private because she still didn't know why they had killed her family. But she had been gloriously healed and saved, and most of all, the fear lifted off of her. I believe that the supernatural 
which has been relegated in so many ways to this extracurricular Christianity, and in, in some instances, entertainment. God has so brought us to a point, so is Satan. He's created such misery in the American public that miracles are no longer a side issue, but they are the central theme of preaching the gospel in America. Whoever cannot cast out devils, whoever cannot instill in people the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not going to have a relevant voice. But those that do, it's going to be explosive, the harvest. And that's why we do what we do. You know, you say you're not a prophet, but in the book you referred to, Vessels of Fire and Glory, you said such things as, and this, this was in uh, uh, 2019, the you said yeah. that statues yeah. are going to be toppled. That was yeah. prophetic. Yes. Three things that I saw was mega churches that were totally empty, but I didn't know why. Hmm. Second was a crisis that would put people in their homes. And third uh, was statues being toppled. And fourth was a amalgamation between Marxism and radical Islam, that they would join forces. I mean, that, that is so preposterous that, that Islam and Marxism, one blatant atheist, the others deceived by trying to follow God, would yes. join forces. Uh, there has to be a devil for that to happen. Yeah, they couldn't be more, and they, they have a natural animosity to each other. Marxism and Islam have been at war for since the, the 1800s. They've been at war against each other since Karl Marx invented it. And, and they've targeted each other and they've come together. And it's embodied in Ilhan Omar from Minnesota and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez from New York. One Marxist, other radical Islam. They've joined forces. And now it's happening on the streets. And, uh, but, but the purpose of the book was to warn people and prepare them for this. I was on a show where they asked me, now that you see what's happened to America, what would you add to your book? And I said, absolutely nothing. Because I can't believe how I wrote it, not for what was happening at the time I wrote it, for the, but for the moment. But it focuses on people becoming something new that is greater than the circumstances they would face. And I truly believe that is the message of this hour. Well, we're making, it's so important, your book. I believe your book is more important now uh, than when we offered it, when it came out. And yeah. so we've, we've made available to those viewers a digital download of the book. Uh, if you uh, just go to my webpage, Sid Roth, S I D R O T H dot org, O R G slash M M, Mario Morello. So again, it's $10 and you will have it instantly. Uh, that's sidroth.org slash M M, the name of the book, Vessels of Fire and Glory. Uh, and I'm going to tell you something. It was almost like you were a newscaster today, some of the things you were prophesying, but the direction in that book is as much God as the true prophecies were as much God. That leads me now to a question. Yes, sir. You say this is going to happen around election time, uh, this judgment poured out. You said influencers, by the way, before I get to that question. What do you mean yeah. by influencers? Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> I'm speaking about Oprah Winfrey. I, I love her. I, want, I don't wish her ill, but she needs to repent because she is actively proposing to millions of Americans there's no hell, there's more than one way to God, and she's projecting a narrative. Uh, well, she, she is the... Uh, if you will, the Pied Piper uh, of uh, that Marianne Williamson's platform where she actually teaches uh, 
a horrific understanding of God. You're right. And, and they cloak it in love. You know, I, I would like to say one last thing about judgment that everyone needs to understand. Ananias and Sapphira were killed, not simply because they withheld money, because we know that for many years, Judas Iscariot was stealing money before he was finally judged. When the, you look at the time lapse between the moment they made a pledge to give the money and they died, that's a very brief time. Why was God so strict? It had to do with the backdrop of what was happening when they withheld the money. That's what I'm trying to warn preachers about. It's one thing to preach the messages of hollow selfishness, elitism, of carnality, of even abuse of funds during a time when America was safe. But they have insisted on keeping that narrative after the pandemic, after the shutdown, after the riots, after the shutdown of churches, the illegal lockdown of churches, they persist in teaching this false message. And that's what Ananias and Sapphira did. They did it against a great revival. In Acts chapter five, God was moving in a mighty way. It's the same chapter with the very shadow of Peter healed the masses. And if you do it during that time, you see the, the strictness goes way up and the wrath of God becomes more apparent. And that's why it's dangerous now. It's when we're doing this nonsense. Okay, those that want the book, Vessels of Fire and Glory, uh, there's a link below, just click it now, right now. Uh, but Mary, a most important question. Yes, sir. How important? Look, I talk a lot uh, about candidates, and people think, oh, that's Sid Roth, he, he's in love with President Trump. I don't get it. He's supposed to be a man of God. No, I'm not in love with President Trump. I'm in love with the freedom we have in America, and I am love, in love with this freedom so I can preach the gospel to the four corners of the earth. I'm in love with God, plus nothing. However, Amen. however, why, why should someone that has listened to the media, and if I just listened to the media, I would feel like them about me? Why should right. someone want to see Trump versus Biden in? It's not Democrat versus Republican. It's the destiny and future of America. Comment. You know, I want to comment with uh, Eisenhower when he went into the concentration camps in Germany. And he made the soldiers look at everything. And they asked him, why are you making them look at this horror? And he said, up till now, our men have known what they're fighting for, but they haven't really understood what they're fighting against. We're watching a question about the Democrat Party, and I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I'm going to say it. People accuse me of telling you to leave the Democratic Party. You need to wake up. The Democratic Party is asking you to leave forcefully. They took the flag out of their convention. They took God out of the pledge. They've made it eminently clear that they are the party of not Christianity, but of perversion, of late-term abortion, which is nothing but the most barbaric form of human sacrifice in the modern era. There is no question that all of you watching are faced with the ultimate choice. Do I vote for evil? Or do I accept God's rescue? You know, when Jesus came to, toward Jerusalem, it's the most ironic scene, Sid, because the masses are hailing him as the Messiah. They're putting the palm leaves down. And as he gets closer, the adulation is having no effect on him because he begins to cry. And he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I would have gathered you in but you would not. They were literally ignoring their own rescue from God. They didn't realize when God had come to save them. 
Trump is a rough cure because we lost our right for a soft cure. Our sin did that. Now we have a man who's a wrecking ball, but he's in God's hands. And you need to understand by voting for Trump, you are stopping a flood of evil in our nation. It is absolutely undeniable. And, and whenever I meet what is, quote, unquote, a woke Christian, oh, I don't like Trump, I don't believe he's Christian, I, don't, I look at it, what is your alternative? What you need to ask yourself is what Dietrich Bonhoeffer asked Germany. What are you doing to stop Hitler? And what are you doing to stop the socialist destruction of the United States? Now, I, I, I am told uh, that Camille Harris uh, is probably the most socialistic uh, member uh, in, 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 the, in the legislature today. And she is the one that will walk in his shoes. Anyone that has half a brain that watches uh, President Biden, your heart goes out for him. But uh, you cannot have someone like him running the biggest organization no. in the world. No, no. And uh, Kamala Harris in California has proven that her priority is to keep power, hold on to power, and say or do whatever is necessary. Joe Biden is mentally uh, diminishing. He is constantly making verbal gaffes, forgetting where he is, sentences slurred. Anyone with compassion would walk up and say, somebody relieve this man of the burden of running for office. But that is the evil part of the story, ladies and gentlemen. The evil part of the story is that Joseph Biden is a puppet. He is the non-candidate. He is the Manchurian candidate. He is a Trojan horse. And the voice behind him is none other than Barack Obama. And that's exactly what everyone needs to understand will come to power. It's about to come to power. What you need to see is in a nation that doesn't want police, that wants to kill babies even after they're born, that wants to destroy and, and tell children, you can decide if you're male or female at a certain age and the fluidity of your gender will be determined later. This is what California is telling and will be a part of curriculum. The only firewall, and, and President Trump was never more accurate than when he said this, they're not after me, they're after you. They're after your Christianity. He well, that's said, a good word to end on. However, there's a better word to end on. Come on. And that is, we're gonna release. I'm gonna have Mario and then I'm gonna pray to release the tangible, manifest, visible glory, the kabod of God. But before we release this dramatic presence of God, I want to make sure that you are right with God. Yes. Because the glory will destroy someone that isn't right with God. And it'll be the greatest day of your life when the presence of God I mean, look at the fear in the Old Testament of even coming, looking at them, at, at looking at, you couldn't even look at him. His glory was so great, and we were such sinners. Amen. So God sent his son to die in our place. And his son was a willing son that not only died in our place, but went through the most humiliating death a person could go through. And because he did that, you can become clean in God's sight. In Judaism, it didn't work. It didn't work in the temple. We had to have Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, every single year to make up for yeah. what we did during the year. But Yeshua, that's his Hebrew name, came once and came to die for all of humanity. He's coming a second time. That's where we Jews have missed it. We combine the prophecies in the Jewish scriptures about his, uh, his coming the second time and eliminate 
his first coming, you'd have to understand, the ancient rabbis knew it, there were two appearances of the same Messiah. The ancient rabbis thought there were just two appearances, but why couldn't there be two appearances of the same Messiah? And he came once to suffer as the Yom Kippur, as the Day of Atonement, and once to rule and reign as King David forever and ever out of Jerusalem. It's so simple, you need help to be confused. Say this prayer with me. Whether you're Jewish or Muslim or Hindu or, or a backslidden Christian or a Christian that doesn't know whether they have really had an encounter with God. Repeat this prayer out loud. It's very important out loud. If you want to stand, stand. If you don't, that's not necessary. You want to close your eyes, close your eyes. You don't, not necessary. But repeat after me and just mean it to the best of your ability. That's all God wants. Repeat out loud. Dear God. Dear God. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I believe. I believe. Your blood. Your blood. Your precious blood. Your precious blood. Is washing away every sin I've ever committed right is now. Is washing away every sin I've ever committed right now. And giving me the power and giving me the power to overcome sins. To overcome sins. And now that I am clean, and now that I am clean, because of Jesus, because of Jesus, I ask you, God, to come and live inside of me. I ask you, God, to come and live inside me. Jesus, I make you my Savior. Jesus, I make you my Savior. And my Lord. And my Lord. And I am not ashamed. And I am not ashamed. To say, Jesus is my Lord. To say, Jesus is my Lord. Amen. Mary will pray for us. Amen. If God gives you words of knowledge, just let them go. Let them rip. I do believe that all across America, I would like you to place your hand over your heart. And I would like you to understand that the word of God says very plainly, he sent his word and healed them. It's by his stripes we are healed. The healing that you're feeling now in your heart, your liver, in your brain, blood, bones, skin, respiratory, and every manner of disease, that anointing flows, that anointing overwhelms, that anointing empowers and removes cancer, removes viruses, and allows you to be well. The Holy Spirit himself is hovering over tens of thousands of people around the world in this moment, a moment that the devil has dreaded for centuries, when the anointing and the internet would intersect, and that moment has arrived. And we thank you, O oh God, that pastors are being encouraged, that people are being awakened to a true living relationship with God. According to Daniel 11, verse 32, the people who know their God will be strong and carry out great exploits. We will not allow fear to dominate us. We will allow the anointing to overshadow us in the mighty Name of Jesus. Amen. Mario, stretch your hands towards those viewing right now, as I'm doing that right now, and release the glory of God that is on you at now, is on you in the tent meetings, is on you when these great miracles come, and I believe it's transferable right now in Yeshua's name. Receive it in the name of Jesus, the mighty anointing of the Holy Spirit to break the yoke of bondage, to destroy demonic power, to overwhelm you with joy and peace that no circumstance can overwhelm. The power to say, in effect, the end times are not happening to me. I am happening to the end times. 
The power in me is greater than the circumstances around me. Flood them, overwhelm them, empower them. Give them, O oh God, a holy, supernatural presence of God. Let them, Lord, be so flooded with fire in this instance that it will burn out every fear, every bit of confusion, and give them, God, a tongue that cannot be stopped, the spirit and heart of the Lion of Judah, to face everything in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And one last word, and this is important. Don't look back. This is the beginning of the best moment in your life. God bless you.